So y'all keep saying that I'm taking it way too easy on Gabby Hanna. Well, buckle up, mother. What is up, everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel's all about mental health, and what I like to do is pull different topics from the YouTube community, try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. Yeah, so I will be unpacking the interview that iNabber just did with Gabby Hanna, and some exciting news. Editor Zach is back editing this for me. Uh, Tristan and I are about to watch that new show on Netflix called You, and a lot of people have requested me to check it out, so I'm having Zach edit this video. All right, but anyways, go check out Zach's channel. It'll be linked down in the description, all that good stuff. Good guy. Him and I did a, a, a collab not long ago about 500 Days of Summer, if you want to go check that out. First and foremost, what I want to say is this. Like, going into this thing, when I found out, like, I've seen iNabber, like, teasing this video. First, he was just like, oh, I got something exciting that I haven't done before. And then when I found out he was interviewing Gabby Hanna, I'm like, oh, no. Oh, Lordy, Lord, no. And I, I dude, I got to give Frazier, a.k.a. iNabber, some credit. Like, I was going to like maybe just talk crap to like Tristan about how like YouTubers really need to not try to interview people, but I never killed it. So when I watched when I watched like Boogie two nine eight eight interview um, kid behind a camera, or when Nifigers interviewed Bobby Burns, not great interviews. And the reason being is because the interview was in a way where the interviewer was empathizing too much and leading questions in a very agreeable way. Like Fraser, like he came, he came at Gabby hard. You know what I mean? Like, so good on you, Fraser. Excellent, excellent interview. I'll tell you this. If there's ever a scandal with me, Chris from the Rewired Soul, iNabber is definitely doing that interview. All right, so anyways, yeah, I'm going to go through this interview and unpack different things that Gabby said and talked about. Uh, I definitely think there were some good things. Um, I. I, I'm really glad that I think by the end of this interview, everything was answered and talked about, nothing left out. Again, great job, I never. But there's definitely things that I think Gabby could work on to avoid these things in the future. But again, my videos aren't for Gabby, especially since she talks about not watching YouTube, which I'm going to address in this video. But I think this can help a lot of you if you can relate to some of the things that I talk about in this video. So the way I responded was coming from a place of like, frustration and anger and feeling like, oh, this is just one of those things where the internet gets upset about something just because they're bored. And that's what I was approaching it as. That first clip, first clip, big no-no, big, big no-no. I talked about this in my James Charles video where I discussed mindfulness and uh, strengthening your prefrontal cortex, which is your pause button. Gabby Hanna talks about how she was coming from a place of anger and a place from hurt when uh, she made that video. Don't do that. You guys, like, I, I, I can't get it through to you enough. This is why you need to meditate. I know meditation can seem boring. I've done, I did a video about meditation the other day. I'm going to release a video probably next week about six very easy mindfulness practices that you can do to help strengthen the prefrontal cortex. But anyways, like what I said about James Charles, like the last thing you need to do when you're all emotional is go tweet something out. But Gabby Hanna made this video and then we see what happened because of that. Hold on, Zach, I gotta see what I was talking about in this note I got right here. Just because I assumed that doesn't mean that like my 13 year old audience or older audience is looking at it like that. Like they were looking at it as I'm going to get $80 brushes. In yeah, my head, I was just like, okay, $10 for like these brushes, dope. Like I would pay that, you know what I mean? Okay, so right there, Gabby Hanna's like, this is an assumption that I shouldn't have made for everybody. Absolutely, absolutely. So this is gonna sound terrible, but when I was doing freelance writing, when I was learning how to do like copywriting, um, one of the editors I worked with, and this is gonna sound terrible, but screw it. He said, write everything like the people you're talking to are idiots, right? But I think that's a great way to just kind of think and explain things because, you know, a lot of times we're not expressing empathy. So what Gabby's talking about right there, when she took this deal, when she saw what the, what the deal was, she assumed everybody knew exactly the same things that she knew, 
which isn't the case, especially if you think about Gabby Hanna maybe having a younger audience, they don't have that life experience. For example, for me as a 33 year old man to assume Gabby has the same life experience as I do would be me not being empathetic towards her. You know what I mean? So we really need to pause, again, pause. I think 99.9% .9 of Gabby's problems would be, <laughs> would be less if she paused a little bit more. But as a whole, we need to start doing this and thinking about this, like when we're talking to people, like when I talk to my son, right? I need to, uh, you know, be mindful that he may, he not may, he's 10 years old. He doesn't have all the information that I do. So I can't get too frustrated with him if he doesn't have that knowledge. Now, if I taught him something, and then he tries to act a fool. That's a different story. You know what I mean? But this is especially um, important for YouTubers. And later in this video, I'm gonna be talking about how Gabby is disconnected from her audience. But the more disconnected YouTubers are from their audience, the more things like this happen where you assume too many things. I would say most of the people making these videos, I don't think that the intention is just to attack somebody. You know what I mean? I think that people saw something that they didn't like. They thought it, was, it wasn't it was right. There's a lot of young people who are upset. There are people who are spending their money and yep. it, it is something to be talked about. I think this is good that Gabby talked about this and I wish, I wish more YouTubers understood this. Um, something that I'm working on doing a video on is just, just the differences and the similarities between YouTubers and like mainstream celebrities. So Gabby's talking about how like, she understands that, you know, not all commentators are doing hate or trying to throw shade or whatever that is. So like, it's really weird because I fall into this, like into kind of the commentary category, but I'm using it to ultimately teach a lesson to you, right? But some of you have been following my channel for, you know, at least a week. You've, you've seen that some big YouTubers have, you know, been offended or upset about some things that I've said. You know what I'm saying? And and it, it's it's apparent that Gabby is understanding that you know, you're in this position, there's gonna be comments and da 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 from the commentary community, which seems contradictory based on what they talk about later with her Instagram thing, but I'm gonna to touch on that pretty soon here. But I think it is important to know that we're going to be judged, we're gonna be under a microscope, there are people who are gonna talk about this, especially if you're planning on being a YouTuber, right? I've talked about this before. Kids wanna grow up and be YouTubers and things. Like you gotta understand, there's, there's a good and bad to everything. If you're gonna be in the public spotlight, if you wanna be a celebrity, if you wanna be on YouTube, if you wanna be a Twitch streamer, if you wanna be an Instagram model, these are the things that are gonna happen. That's why I try to have you think and analyze and look at these things inside these videos and see what these YouTubers are going through because part of what we'll do, like just when we're seeing stuff, oh, oh, being a YouTuber seems awesome. Like you gotta look that there are negatives to the situation as well. Are you ready to deal with that? And something that we saw in Gabby's video um, at the beginning of 2019 is that she, I, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't comment on whether or not this is a bad career for her. You know, like some, I've seen some people say that, but she needs to learn how to manage it in a different way is what I would suggest. They were like, you know, we're kind of like offended that you're questioning us. Like we've been really professional with you up until this point. So like for you to come to us and like kind of say this is a scam, like whatever. So then it was just sort of like, they really pulled the wool over my eyes too and saying that like, they're like, you know, we've always been upfront about the shipping times. But then I saw later people were talking about like the shipping times changed and stuff like yeah. that. So I was answering everything based on what Kenza was telling me. Which, I mean, I, I chose to believe a company over people on Twitter, which at the time felt like the right thing to do. And mm -hmm. now I'm realizing like, damn, Kenza sucks. <laughs> all right, all right, Gabby, 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 baby girl. So something that I try to teach people a lot, a lot, a lot, it's in everything that I do, is to, you know, be, be smarter and, and take more responsibility for everything that you're doing. Like, I get it. it, it seems like Kenza screwed Gabby over pretty much, but like, the emails, the emails that they were showing, Zach put them up on the screen right now, like, just the way those emails are written, like, these are emails after the fact, but I wonder what the introductory emails looked like, right? Like, I would have been like, uh, this might not be okay. You know what I mean? Like these are red flags to look for. Like, okay, this email is kind of structured funny. Maybe I should hop on it, right? But anyways, like looking for like red flags, I put this up on my Twitter the other day. This is an email I got. This is an email I got, which is talking about their company 
that sells knockoff handbags. And I tweeted out like, I don't think this would be a good fit for the channel, right? Because looking at that email, it sounded like this is not a good thing, right? And this was a little bit more glaringly obvious than maybe the introductory Kenza Cosmetics ones were, but like Gabby is learning and like many other creators are learning, we do have a responsibility to our audience to look at these things. First of all, when I see, <laughs> I don't know if people are gonna be like upset with me about this, but like if I see a video with my like face on the thumbnail, I will like click show me less videos like this, not interested, whatever. Um, and I don't know if that's like a normal thing to do, but for like who I am and like my, the way my brain works, I can't see it, I can't look at it, but it also got to a point where like I don't get on YouTube at all anymore. So I haven't logged on to YouTube since I posted my last video before that, I haven't logged onto YouTube since I posted the video before that, so I don't watch any YouTube. Throughout this video, Gabby says this over and over and over. And let me tell you, all of you, this is not what you do, okay? This is what we call avoidance, all right? So Gabby is talking about how she has been avoiding these things. She does, she uploads, she uploads a, a video and then doesn't check on it, right? Maybe she comments for the next hour or so on it. You know, she's unplugged from social media. She's not looking, she's not looking at any of this stuff. And then we saw what happened. This is what we call avoidance. And this is what so many people struggle with. This is what I struggle with. So so let me, let me explain some of my avoidance and let me know if you can relate to this. So for example, um, when I was like doing this, I was talking to my mom about it and Tristan about it too. Like for me, looking at my bank account gives me anxiety. Right, like looking at it, like I like to imagine like, okay, maybe I have more money in there than what I should or whatever it is, right? And I don't check my bank account. And then you know what happens? Then I get overdrafted and then I act all surprised. It's because I was avoiding it or I get stuff in the mail and I don't open it up because maybe it's a bill, maybe it's something I don't wanna see or I get phone calls from bill collectors and I choose to avoid them and not look at them, right? Like these things can start to spiral out of control. It is not good, it is not good healthy. Now, for me, which is much different than Gabby Hanna, I turned to drugs and alcohol. That is part of my addiction. I was avoiding life in general. I was avoiding my feelings. I was avoiding my emotions. I was avoiding my anxiety, my depression, all these different things. I was avoiding them, so I was turning to toxic behaviors. Now, the way to get out of this is there's a lot of different techniques, and part of it is weighing the consequences, like are you experiencing consequences? So like, if you can relate, like if you avoid things, in this way, if anything that I mentioned or anything else that you can relate to, if you want me to dive deeper in that in a video, let me know down in the comments below because I know avoidance is something that a lot, a lot of people struggle with and there are some therapeutic techniques that might be able to help you get over that. I know that they're out there like watching, but I forgot how much actual influence I have because to me, I like lost touch with that in the sense that I'm so far out of the YouTube community. I don't hang out with a lot of YouTubers. I try to hang out with like people who have like day-to-day -day jobs and my friends from high school and college and stuff like that. So this reminded me who I am and what influence I have and how many people are watching me and that people will go just blindly buy a product just because I said that I like it and stuff like that. So as much as people are like, don't pretend that you don't know your influence, this was like, I do have a big influence and I have to be careful and then put me back into touch with like what's important and like reality and like humans and. Oh, speaking of consequences, right there. Right there, Gabby is starting to see consequences. So I really hope because Gabby says that she's going to therapy again, that she's able to work on getting out of these avoidance techniques because she's already experiencing consequences. She uh, like wanted to be like a makeup artist and she, was hoping that like she would get these brushes and it would help her like become a makeup artist and then she spent her money on them and she's just like these aren't like a good enough quality for me to do that and yeah. that made me sad that like this girl spent her money on something and gabby gabby baby girl baby girl <laughs> this bumps me out so much i see this constantly i see this happen so 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 much all right, where people, like Gabby's like sitting there crying, like she's so sad about this story that she heard about this girl who's, you know, she wants to be a makeup artist and she wants to do this and she spent her money and, you know, these brushes aren't up to the quality. Like Gabby, you make a crap ton of money. Buy her some expensive brushes. Like what? 
<laughs> what? Like, here's what I'm trying to teach all of you. And and by the way, full like disclaimer, like maybe Gabby did and she just didn't say it. But here's the thing, like our emotions like that, they're a call to action, okay? Like if you feel bad every time you walk by a homeless person, do something about it, right? I'm not saying empty out your wallet, but like something that I do, I don't give homeless people money because I'm a former drug addict and alcoholic, but if they're outside of a gas station, like, and they want something and I have the money, right? I'll be like, yo, do you want me to get you some water? Cause in Las Vegas, it's super hot in the summer. I'll be like, can I get you something to eat or whatever that is? Like, I just don't give money. But anyways, your emotions are a call to action. So Gabby could have done that. Like, don't just sit here and be sad about it and cry about it freaking do something about it. You know what I mean? Because this is something that so many of us do throughout life. Like we just walk around feeling bad for other people or we part of this outrage culture. Like, did you hear about what's happening to the starving kids in Africa? Well, donate some damn money to it. Don't just sit around here talking about the problem. How about you focus on the solution? Boom, tied it into the intro. <laughs> you like that? Zach, you like that? You know, you, there's no need to be negative, like fight, like, if you're hurting inside, like, I hope you feel better. Like, it was something along the lines of, like, I'm gonna be the bigger person, and it was it was not. It was horrible, because then, of course, my followers are gonna go attack her. And that's why I took it down, and I felt really bad about it. All right, all right, all right, all right. We finally got to the Instagram thing. So, Gabby's talking about how she felt awful for this, how she felt awful, okay? I still don't think that Gabby did anything wrong. I don't, absolutely not. Still don't, made a video about it. A lot of you were like, hmm, I disagree, that's cool. All right, I don't think Gabby did anything wrong. And by the way, for everybody who's like, this girl didn't attack her. Like, the girl literally said, no one cared. <laughs> like, like, that was, I don't know how you can read that and not see it as some kind of sass, all right? So Gabby ended up deleting it and all that stuff. But anyways, anyways, a lot of you are acting as if Gabby, like, reposted that and put like a message that said, okay, minions, everybody attack her, okay? That didn't happen. So what I do think, what I do think Gabby should have done as soon as she found out that her audience was doing that, she should have denounced it right away. That is where Gabby messed up. So all of you, all of you rewired soldiers out there, if I catch you going around spreading hate, Ooh, Big Papa Chris, I'm coming at you. I'm coming at you hard. So I do think that is where Gabby screwed up, is that she didn't publicly say to her fans, like, this is not cool. And, and still, even in this interview, she didn't say that, you know? She felt bad about it, but even Gabby didn't, like, didn't even, like, it didn't click for her that she never told her audience to do that. Like, we as creators or anybody with an influence, you need to know what we're about and what we don't think is okay, you know what I mean? I don't think that opinions are hate. Like, that's not what I meant by that. But what I was saying was your opinion can be hateful. Right there, right there. I hope this is a freaking lesson for all of you out there, for all of you. I cannot believe the kind of hatred Gabby is getting for forgetting one word, for forgetting one word. Gabby said opinions are hateful. Okay, two words. She meant opinions can be hateful. That's what I saw. I was like, oh, Gabby worded this wrong. Like it wasn't even a second thought for me. So all of you out there who are wondering if you struggle with black and white thinking, there it is. There it is. Go check the comments on my last video about Gabby Hanna and tell me how many of them say, opinions aren't hateful, opinions aren't hateful. Like, do you really think Gabby meant that? Like, again, I think 99.9% .9 of Gabby's problems would be uh, solved if she just slowed down, was a little bit more mindful about what she was doing. But for everybody out there who legit thinks that Gabby, in her soul, thinks that opinions are hateful, like she thinks all opinions are hateful, like, come on guys, like talk about reaching, okay? So that's black and white thinking at its finest, or it's part of what I talked about in my video about Jeffrey and Tana and uh, Trisha, which is, this, this confirmation bias, where you were waiting, you were waiting like, aha, she forgot a couple words. You know what I mean? Like, come on, you guys, like think think just a little bit. Everybody's just like, ignore it, ignore it, ignore it, they'll get bored, whatever, they'll go away. And I was just like, but I feel like that's not fair. In that clip, I had to quit hanging out with those people. And I hope you stop hanging out with them too. Just ignore it, just ignore it, just ignore it. No, that's why most of our lives are 
messed up. I censored myself right there. Our lives are messed up because ignore it. Hey, you got a bill? Ignore it. Hey, these people are mad at you? Ignore it. Oh, your girlfriend's mad? Ignore it. Oh, your boyfriend's mad? Ignore it. Oh, you made your parents upset? Ignore it. No, no. This is part of avoidance. And one thing that we do, like when you guys wonder what I'm talking about with enabling, Gabby has a behavior, an unhealthy behavior of avoidance, and she surrounds herself by people who are giving her terrible advice that plays into her avoidance, right? Like, I am so, so, so grateful for my beautiful and amazing girlfriend sitting right there because when I wanna avoid stuff, she tells me no, go look at it, go face it, go handle it right now, right? So like, I recommend that for all of you. That's, that's tip one. Okay, let me know down in the comments if you want me to do a full video on avoidance, but that's tip number one. Keep people around you who do not reinforce your unhealthy avoidance behaviors. Because I don't really speak to massive YouTubers and stuff, and everyone gets the perception that they are just so void from reality, um, but it is nice to know, like, people, they are thinking about their fans and stuff. Of you know? course, yeah. That last clip right there, that last clip, Frazier, if you're watching this, I think that is the only bad thing that I never said this entire interview, right? Where he said that he doesn't think that Gabby is disconnected from reality. Throughout this entire video, Gabby explained how and why she's disconnected, right? Doesn't read comments, gets off social media. Like, how do you know? How do you, like, how do you know? So you guys don't realize this. Like a lot of my videos I do, you know, research and stuff like that. I've been accumulating research for a few weeks now because I wanna to put together a video with, with a ton of evidence explaining how and why YouTubers are disconnected from their audience. Because you have YouTubers over here feeling as though they're dehumanized, and then you have the audience over here feeling as though you know the YouTubers are disconnected from the audience, and in a sense, it's both people's faults, but many YouTubers are struggling with their, their own disconnection because of the choices that they're making, okay? So again, Gabby explained throughout this video about how she stays away from comments, how she stays away from videos, how she stays away from social media. She is causing disconnection and she doesn't understand what's going on in the reality of the industry that she's in. You know what I mean? So there's, there's some different stuff that I'm gonna talk about in that video. I'm actually planning in the future um, a book about like mental health if you're gonna be a YouTuber, because there's so many things that we just need to address, talk about, nip in the bud. All right, but anyways, that's all I got for this video. Let me know down in the comments below like what your thoughts are, if you can relate to any of these struggles, whether it comes from avoiding things or not apologizing the right way or black and white thinking or whatever it is, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And we got some new names up here. I appreciate you so, so much. And if you would like to become a patron, click or tap right there, all right? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.